Nvidia is launching the next graphics card in their 4000 series lineup and today's video is going to be all about this GeForce RTX 4060 Ti. It is positioned under the RTX 4070 and above the RTX 4060 non-Ti uh, that will be launching in July this year and you will have to spend $400 for this Ti version so in terms of price it is a pretty big step down from the $600 4070 and it costs the same as the previous generation 3060 Ti. But while Nvidia insists that this is supposed to be a 1080p card, I kind of expect that if you spend $400 on a GPU, you should be able to play well at 1440p as well. So let's see how it performs in 30 different games on 1080p and 1440p, as well as how this Founders Edition performs when it comes to thermals, noise and power consumption. Let's begin. The NVIDIA Founders Edition is one of the best looking cards in my opinion. It is a two slot 24 centimeter long card that is very similar to the RTX 4070 but with a lighter shade. And while the 4080 and the 4090 are absolutely massive, this size feels pretty reasonable and it should be compatible with most cases on the market if you can get your hands on one of these because I do expect that they will be available in very limited quantities. It does use the same 16-pin high-power connector as other 4000 series cards and you do get an adapter to a single 8-pin so you can connect it to any old power supply. When it comes to features, the Founders Edition is actually pretty simple. It doesn't have a BIOS switch, it doesn't have any RGB or any other extras for that matter, but you do get a really well-built card that is surprisingly heavy for its size. Nvidia's specs are a little bit odd this time around. Now, usually they would just list the number of CUDA cores, RT cores and Tensor cores, but now uh, they only list the performance of each in teraflops. They do point out uh, support for DLSS 3, which I'll talk about a bit later, as well as AV1 encoding, which is a really nice upgrade if you plan to record or to stream. Now, the possible reason they hid the actual core count is that the 4060 Ti has fewer cores than the previous gen 3060 Ti, and I guess that goes for its shaders, RT cores, and tensor cores. They also mention an 8 and a 16 gigabyte model, but we only have the 8 gigabyte one here, and the 16 gigabyte version will launch in July. It also has a relatively small 128-bit memory bus, but Nvidia claims that the increased cache should outweigh that downside. I really like seeing the reduction in TDP to 160 watts, with Nvidia claiming that typical power consumption uh, will be even lower. But for this video, I will be comparing this 4060 Ti to its predecessor, the RTX 3060 Ti, the most likely upgrade, which is the RTX 4070, as well as the older RTX 3070 that is currently selling for about 500 euros here in the Netherlands, so only slightly more than the expected European MSRP of 450 euros for this card. And as always, if you want to know all the details about my test benches and all the other testing conditions, uh, do check the description of this video. I will leave all the details down below. In Spider-Man Remastered, the 4060 Ti starts off all right, uh, beating the 3060 Ti by a bit more than 20% on both 1080p and 1440p, with the RTX 4070 ahead by a similar margin. It is also a bit ahead of the RTX 3070. In God of War, the RTX 4060 Ti doesn't show any benefits over the 3060 Ti, offering very similar performance at both 1080p and 1440p. Meanwhile, the RTX 4070 is considerably faster, especially at 1440p, where it goes from an OK 106 FPS to a much better 148. And the 3070 is ahead as well. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the 4060 Ti is about 16% ahead of the 3060 Ti at 1080p and 9% ahead on 1440p, so that's okay-ish. The 4070 remains a big upgrade at 1440p, while the 4060 Ti looks pretty similar to 3070, just winning on 1080p and just losing on 1440p. In Dying Light 2, it's a bit faster than the 3060 Ti and the 3070 on 1080p, but again, it is a pretty big gap with the RTX 4070, especially on 1440p, where the 4070 is actually faster by more than 40%. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 4060 Ti beats the 3060 Ti by about 17%, which is okay. 
but it is behind the 3070 again, and the 4070 is faster by 30% or more at both resolutions. Doom Eternal is a super easy game to run with all cards easily managing better frame rates than most monitors can display. So playability is not an issue, but it is great to see raw performance differences. And here the 4060 Ti does beat the 3060 Ti by 16% on 1080p, but only 2% on 1440p. It matches the 3070 at 1080p, but loses significantly at 1440p. And where the 4070 is only 33% faster on 1080p, it is 50% faster on 1440p. Formula One 2022 on ultra high does include some ray tracing effects, so it's really hard to run it on most cards without some sort of upscaling, but I would expect the newer RT cores to at least show some benefit here. On 1080p, it's again 16% faster than the RTX 3060 Ti, but it is still 12% faster on 1440p, which is more than in previous titles. That puts it roughly on par with the 3070, and once again, the 4070 is 30% or more faster on both resolutions. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a very CPU heavy title, so you normally shouldn't expect big differences at 1080p, but still, the 4060 Ti stays ahead by 11% of its predecessor on 1080p and 8% on 1440p, falling just short of the 3070. But even here, the 4070 is far away, 29% on 1080p and 37% on 1440p. The CSGO results for the 4000 series cards have been pretty strange since the launch, and even after retesting every single card multiple times in recent months, the results always remain the same, with the newer 4000 series cards uh, generally ending up behind their predecessors, and the same goes for the 4060 Ti. Now I guess it doesn't matter that much, even if you have a 1080p or a 1440p 360Hz monitor, but it is still a strange result. To keep it a bit shorter, I'm not going to talk about every single individual game because uh, most games do follow the same trend of what you can expect from this card. So let's look at some summaries instead. On 1080p, the RTX 4060 Ti offers well over 100 FPS in the majority of the 30 games I've tested. And the three exceptions can be pushed to over 100 FPS if you use DLSS. I would use regular DLSS upscaling for Red Dead Redemption and Formula One 2022, and DLSS 3 is the best option for Microsoft Flight Simulator as that will get around the CPU bottleneck you will run into. Even though the 4060 Ti looked relatively weak at 1440p before, if we look at all the games, it does actually manage 60 FPS or more in every single title. It is a little bit tight here and there, but with DLSS enabled, you'll generally be just fine. But let's compare it to some other cards. So versus the 3060 Ti, the benefit really varies per game, with the 3060 Ti actually beating the 4060 Ti by a couple of percent in Troy, Total War and CSGO, and showing only single digit differences in some other titles. But there are a few games where the 4060 Ti wins by 20% or more, and on average, looking at these 30 games, it ended up being only 12% ahead without any upscaling, which is more or less in line with Nvidia's own claim of 15%. On 1440p though, the differences are generally small with an occasional exception. 8% overall is far from exciting for a new generation, uh, especially when you look at other uh, 40 series cards that did much better than their predecessor, and it does feel that even though the 4060 Ti is faster on average, it is still a worse 1440p car today than the 3060 Ti was when it came out. Now compared to the RTX 3070 on 1080p, it again kind of varies a bit per game, with some games showing significant differences, like CSGO doing better on the 3070, and Modern Warfare 2 doing better on the 4060 Ti. But overall, they ended up pretty close with a small 1.5% win for the 3070 in the end. And on 1440p, the previous generation RTX 3070 is generally the faster option by about 7% overall. If you want to get even more performance, the RTX 4070 is significantly faster. Even on 1080p, there are a lot of games where it's faster by 20% or more, even approaching 50% in some of them, and on average, it ended up about 27% ahead. 
On 1440p, that average actually goes up to 34%, which is a huge gap for two cards that are supposed to be positioned next to each other. If you're going to play at 1440p or even think about upgrading to it, I would really consider the upgrade. But one area where the 4060 Ti does extremely well is power consumption. It averaged just under 150 watts in gaming, which means that a 3070 uses about 50% more power for a roughly similar performance. Now, I know that a lot of you don't really care about power consumption or power cost, but anyone who games several hours a day and pays their own electric bill should at least consider the total energy cost of the car they're planning to get. So if you are in the US and you're paying about 10 cents per kilowatt hour, the difference isn't that significant at all. Uh, about $20 after four years, assuming you only game two hours a day. And four years sounds like a reasonable upgrade time for a mid-range card like this one. If you play a bit more and you pay a bit more for your electricity, it starts adding up a bit as well. So with four hours a day and 20 cents per kilowatt hour, we're now getting close to an $85 difference. But here in the EU with the current electricity prices, it adds up even faster. So with two hours a day at 35 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, we're already at around 75 euros after four years. And with four hours a day at a still very common 50 cents per kilowatt hour, that adds up to a difference of over 200 euros just in electricity, just to game on a 3070 instead of a 4060 Ti, which is half of its price. Low power also means that you can generally expect most 4060 Ti's to run cool and quiet, and you shouldn't need a ridiculously large and overpriced cooler. And this Founders Edition does a good job, as you would expect, keeping the temperatures very reasonable while barely being audible under load. I do have several third-party coolers here as well, but I'll talk about those in my video tomorrow. Now, another new NVIDIA perk for 4000 series cards is DLSS3 uh, that includes AI frame generation, which means that the GPU basically uses AI to generate an extra frame in between two existing frames, which can really help situations where the frame rate is limited by your CPU, for example, but it also helps to increase the frame rate in those big AAA titles that are just too hard to run to begin with. Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, is very often CPU bottlenecked, uh, even with mid-tier cards. And when you just enable upscaling, the frame rate doesn't improve that much. But with DLSS 3 with frame generation, the frame rate increases by a lot and the image is visibly smoother, especially on 1440p. That being said, it's not always worth using it. In Spider-Man Remastered, for example, with ray tracing enabled, if you compare it to native, the frame rate is a lot higher, but the best setting is clearly just using DLSS upscaling instead, which offers enough FPS for a high refresh rate display and it has the lowest latency possible. In Dying Light 2, with the game set to its highest uh, ray tracing high preset, it depends kind of on the resolution. On 1080p native, the frame rate is too low to play comfortably, but using DLSS upscaling provides a nice frame rate and a big latency improvement, whereas frame generation barely helps the frame rate and shows a significant latency penalty. But on 1440p, uh, turning frame generation on does feel best as the 42 FPS 1% lows without it are really noticeable. With frame generation, it is definitely better, even if I would personally just uh, drop the quality setting for an even higher frame rate and lower latency. If you want to play The Witcher 3 on the highest setting with all RT effects enabled, uh, turning frame generation on is the way to go even on 1080p. Uh, you won't be able to hit 60 FPS natively or even with upscaling on, but with frame generation, it is actually really nice. On 1440p, you could just get above 60 FPS using DLSS 3, but just like with Dying Light, I would personally just drop the settings a little bit instead of trying to max out all the options. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077. In its fully path-traced RT overdrive mode, it works barely. Uh, using DLSS upscaling and frame generation, we end up with 69 FPS average, 50 FPS 1% lows on 1080p. So you can play it, but at the same time, I'd say it's kind of disappointing. This is NVIDIA's latest $400 card and it just barely holds up here, 
even with frame generation. Uh, whatever the next AAA RT Overdrive mode title will be a year or two from now, there is a big chance that this state-of-the-art $400 GPU will struggle with it a lot. So overall, I think the 4060 Ti kind of does what I expected it to do. Uh, like I said, with the 4070, NVIDIA has the ability to position a product exactly where they want it to be, so it makes just enough sense compared to everything else. 12% more performance than a 3060 Ti feels like the absolute bare minimum they can get away with, with the 4060 Ti being slightly better. Uh, it costs the same, it's technically faster, you get DLSS 3, you get AV1 encoding, and you get a much lower power consumption. It's absolutely not worth upgrading if you have a 3060 Ti, but if you have an older GPU and you're choosing between the two, the 4060 Ti does make more sense. It also might be disappointing to hear that it's the same as a 3070 at 1080p, with the 3070 actually being faster at 1440p, but a 3070 costs more, doesn't offer all the features, and uses way more power, so I wouldn't really recommend a 3070 either unless they really drop in price. The only current generation alternative is the 4070, which is very close in name, but really far when it comes to performance. And even though the 4070 is not the most popular card at the moment, this 4060 Ti actually makes it look attractive and better than ever. But for 1080p gaming in particular, you don't need to spend another $200 on the GPU, because even $400 is a lot of money for 1080p only. And I do think that NVIDIA's uh, 1080p focus is the biggest weakness to consider here. If you even think about upgrading to 1440p in the future, this card might not be able to comfortably pull it off. I mean, it can manage it just fine at the moment, but the extra 34% performance plus extra VRAM that the 4070 offers are going to make a huge difference both in current and in future games. But if you're definitely going to stick to 1080p only for some reason, uh, this card will be fine. As much as I would like it to be 30% faster than the 3060 Ti and an absolute must-buy for everyone, that was never going to happen without any new cards from AMD in this segment. Which brings me to the final point. AMD hasn't launched anything new below their $800 RX 7900 XT, so nothing that compares with this card. But rumor has it they're supposed to launch a new affordable card very very soon. So if you were wondering if you should buy this one, uh, just do wait a very tiny bit longer before pulling a trigger. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their RMX Shift power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are very unique as they come with connections on the side instead of the back, making it easier than ever to add and remove cables as well as cable manage your build. They are extremely reliable and power efficient and due to their low noise fans that stop completely under 50% load, they are also extremely quiet. You get a variety of cables for any system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power connection, and on top of that, you get a nice 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Now that is all I have for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope it was useful enough. Uh, I will be posting a few more videos tomorrow with some new third-party models, so if you want to see those, make sure you click that subscribe button. That way you won't miss any of my future uploads. Bye all and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.